is always secretly unity. Take the contrast between the words we use, explicit and implicit. It's very valuable words. What is explicit? What's on the outside? Let's say how we come on publicly. Explicitly, we are thus and so. We have a fight. Uh, we're in competition, say, in business, explicitly. But implicitly, we've worked this out, that we have agreed in a secret way that nobody knows about, that this competition is extremely valuable to both of us. And take it politically, for example. Let's take the situation of Russia versus the United States. Explicitly, in public, this has to be a big fight. These two ways of life, these two ideologies are opposed. They say, you know, we are... But behind the scenes, it's all been carefully worked out. You bet it has. When swans start to mate, they're not sure what they're supposed to do. And they, they begin to fight. I had a long talk about this with, with C.G. Jung. He lived uh, on the edge of Lake Zurich, and he had a little summer house right on the water's edge, and there were many swans there. And I was getting up after, at the end of a conversation with him, and we were beginning to walk back to the main house, and I said, isn't it true that swans are monogamous? And he said, yes, uh, they are. He said, do you know, I have had most interesting relationships between these swans and many of my female patients who thought they were homosexual. I mean, Jung wasn't a uh, sexual snob. I mean, he, he understood all the legitimacy of all kinds of sexual variations. But he said it has been a point of departure for our discussions. And he said it's a very funny thing that when they begin to mate, they start fighting. And they don't know what it's all about, and then suddenly the fight turns into lovemaking. So that's what I mean. Underneath opposition, there is love. Underneath duality, there's unity. That Tweedledum and Tweedledee agreed to have a battle. So, you see, here's that weaving principle. The things hold together by over, under, under, over, over, under, under, over, over, under, under, over. And that creates a stuff, it creates a fabric, it creates clothing, it creates shelter, it creates what we call matter. Matter, mata, mother, and also the same word maya, illusion. <laughs> See, the world as a marvelous illusion. Now we've got to go into this. Look, look at another form of the thing. You can play it not only by two as one, but you can play it by three as one. You know the uh, trademark for Ballantine's Ale, which is three interlocked rings. Now, the way these rings are interlocked is such that they are joined only if the three of them are present. If you take one away, the other two fall apart. This is a very interesting phenomenon, but it can be created physically with uh, steel rings. Their, their cohesion depends on all three of them being present. Now, we have tried scientifically to understand the world and explain its mysteries by analyzing the smallest, smallest particles of things that exist. Inquiring down, 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 what is this thing we call flesh or call steel or stone? What is it made of? Go down into the midst of it. And that's given us a certain understanding. But only half of the understanding equally important is not what is the tiniest particle, 
But in what context is the tiniest particle? You see? In, in relation to what is it? Just as the word bark, as I showed you, has different meanings in different sentences. So, cells, molecules, atoms, have different properties in different contexts. So, what uh, the scientist equally needs to study is not simply what is anything when very, very minutely analyzed, but where is it? When is it? That makes all the difference. So, do you see that a lot of people who get anxious when they hear that everything is relative have no, no need to get that anxious. Relativity isn't some kind of slippery morass in which all standards and all directions get lost. Relativity is really the soundest situation that there is. See, it's the, it's the one supporting the other. It's this thing. Do you know this? This is wonderful. X marks the spot. Imagine this going on and on. Supposing my finger were indefinitely long, both fingers, and they were doing this. See, they're just crossing each other. Now, on one side of it, it's a pair of scissors and it cuts. What is it on the other side? Why, it's opening female legs, saying, please come in. This utter softness, utter receptiveness. On the other side, it's <laughs> But on this side, it's please, 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 yes. Welcome. <laughs> and everything's based on that. See, it's <laughs> this way. Sharpness, teeth, biting, spines, crab shells, all that kind of thing, you know. On the other side, it's the melting softness of life. See, they go together just like that. And goodness knows what it is on these outer two sides. I've, I haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> so, if you see that, if you, if you get that principle, you can feel yourself not sort of just rattling around in the world, as a kind of, um, you know, somebody who's been stuck down there. But you can feel yourself going on in absolutely exact relationship with everything around you. And this is very beautiful. It isn't just that you are here looking at what's out there like you might be photographing it with your eyes. It's that if that there wasn't there, you wouldn't be here. The outside thing that you see and the inside thing that you are are poles of the same magnet or back in front of the same coin, and without one there isn't the other. That means, of course, then, that we are living in the midst of a world of animals, vegetables, minerals, atmospheres, astronomical bodies that's highly intelligent. It's intelligence concentrated, crystallized in our brains. That's where it comes out, you see. In any field, let's say, let's take any field of forces. We take a chemical solution 
and at certain critical points in this chemical solution, the crystals start to form. And so in the same way, the total intelligence of this whole universe crystallizes in human brains. Also in other kinds of brains. But that's where it really comes out. But it's the total intelligence of the whole field that does this. So we go with the whole thing, interdepend with it. We don't live in an environment which is just rock, just air, just atmosphere and so on. The environment's only like that when we think about it analytically and try to explain it. But when we think of it isn't just rock and air, see, but those things go together. When you see the interconnectedness, when you see in the simplest way how flowers go with bees and other insects, they don't live without them. Humans go with cattle, they don't exist without them. Plants, etc., etc., etc. When you see the intervals, the significance of the relationships between these things, it's only then, when you see that, that you are aware of the melody. Go back to the illustration I gave of the person who can't hear melody, who's tone deaf. He hears only a succession of sounds because he's not aware of the intervals. Now, most people are brought up to be tone deaf in respect to their own existence and the rest of the universe. They don't see the relationships. They're not aware of the unity. And so, once you, you spot that, you spot how everything goes with the thing, that you are one end and that out there is the other end. And they really go together. Then you may be said to be living a harmonious life.